Hey friends! Unsupervised machine learning methods do not rely on human label information, but instead extract hidden relationships and patterns from data. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the research paper and discuss the possibility of applying only unsupervised methods for automated and unbiased seismic interpretation. My name is Ruslan, I am the CTO. For many years, I've been developing and launching AI-based solutions. The title of this video is a bit controversial. I don't usually put a lot of hope for classical unsupervised methods to provide a reliable interpretation. And there are several reasons for it. First is that seismic is non-unique, which might lead to failing to keep structural information, resulting in misclassification of structures from various geographies. The other problem is identifying the right number of classes for the unsupervised method. Of course, we could use some methods like elbow, silhouette and others. Still, because of non-uniqueness, it might lead to misclassification of the same deposition package into different faces or lump several faces into one. That is why I don't see unsupervised methods on frontiers of the seismic interpretation for now. Moreover, based on my professional experience working with an incredible team of data scientists in Geopla, we did not use classical unsupervised methods like k-means or cajonin maps for a long time. I might be ignorant of the subject. Let's see. All right. Imagine a situation when we receive some new seismic project. It is shiny new, and we don't have any interpretation for it. And we receive instruction from the boss to develop structural framework for the volume. The manual interpretation process is hardly applicable because of a large amount of data, complexity of the geology, time for the interpretation, and if we are not familiar with the region, than all the biases posed by our experience. As humans who might tire, we might miss some critical information valuable for the exploration activity. There are several ways to optimize our workflow and promptly get quality results. One way is to use supervised deep learning networks and to train it, it on our labels. From my experience and based on the recent publications, we don't need to have a lot of training slices for it. For example, Geoplot AI software offers a highly optimized deep learning workflow that uses a one-shot learning framework that requires only one or few training slices for faulting of facies prediction. But in our case, we are unfamiliar with the region, and there is no one to ask about it. We might include our own biases into the interpretation. So using supervised learning with our own labels is not an option for us. The second way is to train a supervised deep learning network on a variety of data that would be free of human biases. Sounds hard to achieve. But we can remove some biases by training a network on a massive synthetically generated seismic dataset. And the other way that I'm covering today is to use unsupervised learning methods proposed by the researchers from Rio de Janeiro in the paper for automated interpretation tool to eliminate any human related biases. By the way, you know that all in gas content is not trending on YouTube. If you enjoyed that you've seen so far, Smash that like button so that the video will reach more people. It is much appreciated. The authors propose applying unsupervised clustering methods separately on seismic and well log data in the paper. And we're starting with seismic clustering. Pointwise data clustering methods considered are just analyzing the seismic volume using each data point as a sample. These samples can be described with multiple seismic attributes commonly extracted from the amplitude data. But we need to be aware that each new seismic attribute usually requires GB of memory, which adds up to a prohibitive size for most consumer-grade hardware. Therefore, they propose feature selection to eliminate irrelevant or redundant seismic attributes. Starting with 28 seismic attributes, 
They reduced the subset to only 12 based on a weighted score from special algorithms that examined the importance of each attribute. After selecting the best subset of seismic attributes, they apply classical clustering algorithm to the data. As expected, the group formed by pointwise data clustering outlines seismic components with similar characteristics. Nonetheless, the group behavior can be chaotic. Such a feature is undesirable. As a result, the performance of pointwise clustering is regarded as limited. Spatial group data clustering, on the other hand, is a processing pipeline that uses image segmentation methods to arrange seismic data segments into spatial clusters. It's worth noting that here input seismic is additionally pre-processed. A segmentation algorithm divides each slice into many special compact segments. Then, many features are extracted from each segment. And finally, a clustering algorithm is applied to individual segments, sorting them into groups with similar characteristics depending on the selected attributes. For the task, the authors demonstrated a watershed segmentation model. It interprets the image as three-dimensional topological map. The watershed algorithm generates longest segments that correspond to seismic facies patterns better. There are few visible errors between the border segments still. Then we have to select which features to use for clustering. After choosing spatial segments and features, we need to cluster the data. As demonstrated in the paper, a carefully selected subset of features might produce more homogeneous groups with high accuracy in terms of seismic structures. It's still unsupervised method. That shows the problem that I've already mentioned. The problem with non-uniqueness of seismic data. Now let's talk about well low clustering and associate them with seismic clusters. The seismic field data used in this study includes one well of sufficient length. The well log information contains the standard set of curves. These logs are initially pre-processed with a windowing approach. The windowed well log data is then grouped using k-means to identify groupings of comparable lithologies. The following four phases are involved in connecting seismic facies with well logs. Here is the example of the resultant association for the well clustering with a window of 6 meters and 6 groups. Here the figure demonstrates that the upper half of the seismic image cannot be directly connected with well log groupings unless a group from the well log region is also present in the top half of the seismic image. As a result, the current scenario connects the cyan and orange groups from seismic clustering to the lithologic properties of the blue group from well clustering. The expert has to utilize their brain to correlate the labels from wells with the facies clustering. Let me know what you think about the results in the comment section. Do you see a real-world application of this research? Would you like to have this tool in your arsenal? The authors did an excellent job of reviewing various classical unsupervised methods for seismic interpretation and offered a solid summary of various experiments using attributes, feature selection, and machine learning methods. By the way, I did not cover all the specifics of this paper. For further details, please read the publication. Anyway, this work did not change my view about unsupervised methods for seismic interpretation, since the seismic clustering results is far from ideal. And the mentioned problem of seismic non-uniqueness damages the performance of unsupervised methods. The recent paper used encoder-decoder deep neural network but still could not battle the problem. Thanks to the authors for making this research public. I have another video about introduction to seismic facie classification with machine learning. Consider checking it out. Thanks for watching this video. See you next time.